Okay, now let's discuss how to uh, work a chair flip and how to uh, establish which of the two chairs is uh, lowest in energy and highest in energy. So let's look at this di substituted uh, alkene. I'm sorry, di substituted cyclohexane. I'm going to convert that to a chair. First thing I want to do is, of course, draw a proper chair. Remembering that we have three sets of parallel lines here. And then I want to put these substituents in place in the correct orientation. Uh, and I always sort of look, think about it as I'm looking at, I'm looking at the top. So I'm looking at the top of the molecule and thus Here's the top, here's the bottom of my chair. So it's really almost like I'm sort of looking this direction in the plane of the paper. So we need to pick, pick a carbon to start with. This carbon is number one, two, three, four. These are just arbitrary numbers that I'm going to put up there to make sure that my substituents are in the same relative locations when I transfer them to this chair structure. Typically, I will start with uh, carbon 1 being this one over here, and that's just kind of how I think about it. Um, so the substituent at carbon 1 is pointed up towards the top, and so I want to put my two bonds here. The top upward facing bond is where my methyl goes, and the hydrogen that wasn't put in, you know, this hydrogen right here, is now in a downward facing equatorial bond. And then if I count over 2, 3, I get to this carbon here, there's an up bond, there's a down bond. The up bond has the isopropyl, so I want to add that to the top of the up bond. And then the hidden hydrogen is at the downward equatorial bond. So I'm going to erase this word top because that's getting in our way. And so now we have a, a proper chair structure of this di-substituted cyclohexane. And I don't need these hydrogens, but I put them in so that they're complete. And perhaps the question says draw all hydrogens and all other bonds, and then you'd have to put in all the axial and equatorial hydrogens that we, we have. Uh, in this case, we're just going to leave it alone. So now I want to do a chair flip, and I'll use a squiggly arrow to indicate a chair flip. And there are two ways that we can go about doing this. We can draw the opposite chair, and sometimes that's a bit more difficult uh, for beginning students because we learned how to draw... one version of the chair, uh, but the other one, the mirror image essentially, is a bit more challenging. Um, so uh, if you practice that, uh, it's really the same method as drawing uh, in the book, except that you draw your third line on the left instead of on the right. And then if I'm going to track this carbon during the chair flip, I'm going to put make that a dot so we can track him. All upward facing carbons, and remember that the, the upward facing carbons, there are three of them on a you know, cyclohexane ring become downward facing carbon. So now carbon one is this one right here. And then carbon two, again, going clockwise around the ring, and three. And you'll see that carbon two right here was a downward facing carbon. Now it's an upward facing carbon. And thus the axial and equatorial bonds will swap as well. So this was up axial. It will be up equatorial now. Up does not change, it's still up, right? Because this methyl is still pointed towards us. It doesn't matter what chair conformation we're talking about, this methyl right here is still pointed towards us. So now up and equatorial looks like that. Down and axial, instead of down and equatorial as we did be in the beginning, is our hydrogen. Same thing with carbon three. Up now is equatorial, down is axial. And so this is our chair flip. Another way to do this, if you prefer to only draw one uh, style of chair, like the one... Okay, so we have the same chair, and if I were to take this as carbon number one, I would end up with a, a methyl in the up position and a hydrogen in the down position, and that would be the same exact chair as we started with. So I can't identify this as carbon number one. I need to move over one carbon, doesn't matter which way, and identify this bottom right carbon as number one. 
Thus, when I draw my up methyl, it's equatorial. When I draw my down hydrogen, it's or, or, sorry. When I draw my down hydrogen, it is uh, axial. Same thing with carbon three. The down hydrogen is axial. The up isopropyl is equatorial. These are the same. They're just different rotations of the same molecule. If you make a, a 3D model of this with your model kits, you can rotate that 3D model six different ways to get six different appearing structures uh, without having changed any bonds or moved anything around. It's just a matter of rotating it in space. Just like if you rotate your laptop in space, sometimes you'll be facing the screen, sometimes you'll see the back of the screen. Uh, it's still a laptop, it's still the same laptop, you haven't changed anything about it, it's just a rotation in space. So these are the same, they're just rotated. And you can follow this same procedure if there are six substituents on your cyclohexane ring. It just gets a little more uh, involved in drawing the chairs, uh, but you can number it, keep track of where your substituents are on what numbered carbon, and if they are wedges or dashes.